Smile. I'm the chief of sinners. I'm the chief of sinners here. But Christ has forgiven me of every one. Oh, because of his promise that he would blot it out. And that times of refreshing would come from the presence of the Lord. And I was converted by the Almighty. And then joy came. Peace came. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, I love it. Because I deserve hell. And he was merciful to me. I deserve hell. No, now I get to enter the kingdom of God. I'm saved. My sins have been blotted out. I'm forgiven. I have a clean conscience. I don't have to do drugs anymore. I don't have to indulge in alcohol anymore. I know my identity. I know who I am. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, God loves me and His hand is on me for good because I seek Him. The Lord says His hand is on me for good who seek Him. But those who forsake Him, Oh, they come under his wrath, his judgment. And I want you, I want you to understand the day of the Lord is near. I give you both the goodness and the severity. Oh, severity towards those who have fallen. Many have died before you, and they thought they could escape just like you could. You don't care. You don't care because you don't, you don't realize the severity of God. You, you need to be awakened to understand that God is holy. He is just. He is pure. He is undefiled. There is no sin in His presence. You're not going to come into His presence. You need to understand the severity of God. It's a terrifying thing to fall in the hands of the living God. And I know the terror of the Lord, so I try to persuade men and women to get right with God. You understand, hell has opened its mouth beyond measure. Hell has enlarged itself. Multitudes are falling into hell. And I'm reaching out my hand. Turn back, turn back. Why then will you die? Why will you die? Because you love your sin. You love your lifestyle of homosexuality. You love to have sex out of marriage. You love smoking your marijuana. You love doing what you want. You don't realize. You don't realize the wicked. The wicked are turned into hell. Seventh-day Adventist, hell. Place of weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth, gnawing on your tongue in extreme pain. If I knew there was a place like that, and I didn't warn you of it, would that be love? Oh, no warning's too strong. Hell is horrible. Hell is going to be terrifying for you. So that's why I have to warn you. That's why I have to try to persuade you. I'm trying to persuade you to think people about this. You are the reason there's less and less Christian people around. No, 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 I can't save anybody. Listen, I can't turn you on, and I cannot turn you off. You are turned off already. It's the Spirit of the living God that turns you on. The Spirit of the living God turns you on. How vile can you get? Do you know every idle word you're going to have to give an account of it on the day of judgment? That you just flippantly throw your words out and you think you're not accountable? You think he who formed the air does not hear? Oh, you think he who formed the air does not hear? You think he who formed the eye that he does not see? Oh, God sees and hears. The eyes of the Lord behold the evil and the good. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth. Longing to show himself strong to those whose hearts are stayed on him. Oh, when your heart is stayed on him, he'll show himself strong to you. Oh, you'll be blessed. Blessed is that man who walks with God. All wisdom comes, insight, understanding. Oh, the presence of God where there's fullness of joy. Oh, this is just for you, young man, because God wants to bless you. But for the wicked, the ungodly, I'll tell you what happens. Because I'm concerned for you. You don't understand the end. The end when your heart stops beating. Because God could require your soul tonight. You're not in control. You're not God. You're not invincible. You're not immortal. You're not, you don't just get to do what you want whenever you want to think that you're not accountable. There's a day of accountability, huh? Oh, it's accountability. Oh, I'll tell you, I don't care. The kings of the great of the earth, the great men, the mighty men, every slave and every free man. Oh, will be there on the day of judgment. The books will be open. Oh, everyone's gonna be 
be judged when it's written in the book. And they're, they're going to review that to you. And then there's another book. There's another book. Oh, there's another book. And is everything that's written in that book? It's cast in the lake. He'll give you life, eternal life. And let, hear, let him who hears come. And let the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, come and drink of the living water, that your sins may be washed away. And you have a clean conscience. You have the joy of the Lord, which becomes your strength. You have a peace that passes all understanding. You have made friends with God. Now you're a child of God. Now you are righteous in God's face. Oh, don't be a child of the devil. Don't serve the devil. Don't give your life to the devil. Oh, don't continue in your sin because that's a highway to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. I'm concerned. I'm concerned about you. Does anybody love you? I'm trying to love you in a way you've never been loved before. Let's go do it. Oh, yes. That's why I'm here. That you might hear the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ. I'm a born again Christian. The Spirit of the living God has come within me. I was bound in my sin. I was a slave to sin. And I was going down the road just like you. The Spirit of God is in the hell. Your unbelief. Your unbelief sends you to hell. You don't believe what God has written. You don't believe what God has revealed. You don't believe that Christ is the only way. Salvation and no one else. You don't believe that. You make God a liar. You tell God he's a liar because you don't believe him. He says you sin. You say, no, I might have told one lie or had a half truth, but I'm not that bad. I'm a pretty good person. You redefine what God says is wrong. When God says that a man should sleep with another man, you have redefined it and you call it gay. When God says not to have sex with the opposite sex, oh, you have redefined it. You call it safe sex, wear a condom. You have redefined everything that God said was wrong and you make it right. You become, you become a reprobate. You're given over to a reprobate mind. Jesus what is a reprobate mind? What, God said. what is a reprobate mind? You no longer know what is right and wrong. Wrong is right, right is wrong. You become twisted in your thinking. You become perverted in your thinking. Oh, you're giving yourself over to the Antichrist. You are against Christ. You invite demons in your life. You invite Satan in your life. Oh yes, you open your life up and be tormented. But then a Christian comes out and declares to you, Christ is able to deliver you, to forgive you, to cleanse you, to take that heart of stone you have, when you have no feelings to God. You have no desire for God. In fact, you're at enmity against God. You hate God. Most of you hate God. I used to hate God. I used to do what I wanted. I wasn't going to obey God. Oh, until God came in. Oh, he changed me. A miracle took place. You're looking at a miracle. Supernatural power of God. Right here. You're reading it. You're hearing it. I stand here by the power of God. And not by words of wisdom that we have. Oh, no. It's demonstrated by the power. That's right. The power of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit that comes. Oh, it transforms you, changes you, radically changes you. You can't change yourself. Oh, it's wonderful because the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. Oh, that power is wonderful. As many as him who believes. Oh, if you believe, you receive the power of God on the salvation. Oh, the message of the cross. It's foolishness to those who are perishing. Foolishness. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of God and the salvation. I got the power. I got the power. You can have the power. You can have the power. Oh, how do you get the power? You repent. What is repent? It's a change of attitude. No longer do you hate God, but you love Him. It's a radical lifestyle change. No longer do you lean on your own opinion. No longer do you claim your own rights. 
Could you lay down your right?